Isn't it always the way when a fighter who staked their claim to be one of the best in the division loses that people turn around and say, oh, was he ever that good? And obviously when it comes to Joshua being in the same weight division as Tyson Fury, a man who lost his previous fight to Alexander Usyk was nearly stopped in that fight. You people now saying, oh, could you imagine what Tyson Fury would have done to him? Could you imagine what Fury would have done to him? As if, you know, it's a given because Daniel Dubois beat Anthony Joshua, that means someone like Tyson Fury definitely beats him. Well, that's not actually the case. And if you were, we're never going to see Joshua Fury in their primes meet, which is a shame. It really is, because I think it would have been a good fight. And it would have been a highly competitive fight because Fury fights nothing like a Daniel Dubois. He's nowhere near as aggressive as a Daniel Dubois. His jab isn't near as good or as fast or as hard. I think that Tyson Fury versus Anthony Joshua stylistically would have actually been a pretty interesting fight. I think if you're talking about prime for prime in terms of, at the time you're talking the late 2010s, the big three were Joshua Fury, Wilder. I think Wilder out of those, Fury and um, Wilder would have been the harder fight for Anthony Joshua, just stylistically when I, when I weigh it up. But people now say, well, you know, Tyson Fury would have, would have clearly beaten Anthony Joshua and Joshua was always hype. You know, based off of what? Based off of him losing to Daniel Dubois. Uh, a guy who, yeah, I will hold my hands up. I ripped Daniel Dubois off. That was a big mistake on my behalf and I apologise to Daniel Dubois for that because I seen a fighter capitulate twice in high enough profile fights. Well, one was for the heavyweight championship of the world and the other one was against a fellow contender which, you know, could very well have had championship implications for, you know, possibly further on. And I seen him capitulate twice. So I thought, how do you come back from that? But he did. He came back brilliantly. And he's young enough to come back. With Anthony Joshua, he's 35. He's going on 35 years old. And he's taken an absolute Hail Mary beat against Dubois. So I really do look and think, how do you come back from that? But when I look at Joshua's resume, and I compare it with the likes of a Deontay Wilder and a Tyson Fury, I mean... Deontay Wilder, if you go on to box rec, I mean, where even is he ranked in box rec? I know box rec rankings don't mean, they really don't mean anything. Like, they, they genuinely don't. But Deontay Wilder, I mean, where, if I actually, I have to go on to Zile Zhang's. Deontay Wilder is now ranked 37th in box rec rankings, and he's the 6th best heavyweight in the US. How the mighty have fallen, huh? If you look at Deontay Wilder, right, and people, you know, would say, oh, you know, Joshua was never the best of his era. No, he wasn't. Nor was Fury and nor was Wilder. Wilder's resume is just, uh, honestly, like, Ortiz is his best win. And then it's Stavern. Ariola, Spilka, Washington. That resume for a heavyweight champion, and you've got to bear in mind, he beats Stavern in 2015. It took him three years to fight a wordy contender. A actual wordy contender. Eric Molina wasn't, Johan Duapas wasn't, Spilka wasn't. Ariola had retired a couple of years prior. Gerald Washington, he wasn't the original opponent. It was an Austrian fighter who failed the PED test and he wasn't even a viable contender. Stavern, mandatory challenger who had one fight in nearly three years. That's incredible. And then he fights Ortiz, draws with Fury, beats Dominic Brazil, who, again, not really a, a massively credible contender, to be fair, beats Ortiz again. And since, so, so since the Dominic Brazil fight, he's had two wins, right? One against Ortiz, one against Hellenius. He has had six fights since then. All right, that kind of sums it all up. You want to talk about Tyson Fury's resume. And, you know, people want to, you know, make out with Tyson Fury's this and that, the best heavyweight of this era and stuff like that. Vladimir Klitschko, best win, no question. Christian Hammer, no. Draw against Wilder. Tom Schwartz, out of a lane. Dylan White, Derek Chisora, third time, lost to Alexander Rusek. The Wilder wins, people make out as though those Wilder wins are something incredible, something to behold. Wilder, as I said, in his last six fights, he's lost four of them. Three of them by knockout. Twice against Fury. Didn't let his hands go whatsoever against Joseph Parker. A man Anthony Joshua beat, mind you. And then gets ironed out by Zile Zhang, a 40-year-old. 
Zilei Zhang at that in a fight where again didn't throw a punch and yet people won't really knock a Wilder and they won't knock a Fury and you know people say oh Fury will win the rematch against Usyk this that and the other and with Joshua you know Otto Valian, Robert Hellenius, Jermaine Franklin, his three fights. We can, or I'm not even going to class the Nganu fight. We're just not gonna even going to go there. But they're his last three meaningful wins. And, you know, they're they're not amazing, to say the least. But then, you know, Kubar Pulev, he'd seen better days at the time, fair to say. Andy Ruiz, Andy Ruiz, unified heavyweight champion. Pavekin got a win over Dylan White. Drew against Michael Hunter. Pavekin was somewhat useful. Joseph Parker, that was probably as close to peak Joseph Parker, maybe athletic peak Joseph Parker. Carlos Takam, Carlos Takam still had plenty in the tank. He beat Tony Yoka years later. Vladimir Klitschko, all right, an older Vladimir Klitschko, but nevertheless, a young version of Dylan White, a Dylan White who would go on to be a world-ranked heavyweight. And Joshua was doing these, and you know, the people say like, oh, but Joshua, you know, Eddie Hearn treated him with kid gloves. Oh yeah, treated him with kid gloves. So yeah, fights Charles Martin, and then in the space of a year, he's fighting Vladimir Klitschko, a living legend. Then a year later, he's fighting Joseph Parker, an undefeated in his prime heavyweight contender, but somehow treated with kid gloves. But Wilder wasn't. And with Tyson Fury, a man who, when the question by Adam Cattrall was even put to Frank Warren last year before the USEC fight was announced, when he was getting ready to fight Francis Ngannou, and there was a lot of backlash towards that fight. When Adam Cattrall put the question to Frank Warren about Tyson Fury fighting a contender, Arsene Bekmakmanov, Frank Sanchez, Martin Bacoli, what planet are you on was the response from Frank Warren. Not this, that, no, what planet are you on? They don't draw any money. Um, excuse me, you are claiming he is the best heavyweight of this era, so fight your contemporaries. And people will say, well, you know, Arsene Bekmakmanov lost, and then, you know, Frank Sanchez lost, and yes, they did lose, yeah, but who did they lose to? Was it Tyson Fury? No, it wasn't, was it? No, it wasn't Tyson Fury. They didn't lose to him. Just because they lose to someone doesn't mean that, look, Daniel Dubois got stopped by Alexander Usyk. Joshua didn't. All right, but look what happened when they went face-to-face. Look what happened when they fought. You know, the act as though, well, that fighter lost to this guy, so clearly Tyson Fury would beat him. That's not how boxing works. You know, it's not it's not how you do it. So people saying that Joshua, you know, he's crap, you know, Eddie Hearn did this and he kept them safe and this, that, and the other. Deontay Wilder was kept safe. Tyson Fury took risks. Yes, he did take risks in his career, but he for every risk he took there was a long stretch where he was absolutely taking the biscuit with regards to some of his fights and matchmaking. Absolutely taking the biscuit. With Anthony Joshua, the only time you can actually say he took fights that were essentially gimme fights, they, they were. He was on paper. He was way better than uh, Franklin was ever going to be, way better than Hellenius, way better than Otto Valine. That was when he wasn't the champion and was on a comeback trail. So I'm sorry, you know, I'll give you a pass on that because you don't have a title. You're not defending a title against Jermaine Franklin or Otto Valine or Francis Ngannou. You're not doing any of that. You have lost back-to-back fights. You're on a comeback trail. That's fine. Go for it. No, no problem there. But if he was a champion and they were saying, oh, you know, he, he, he's IBF champion, but, you know, he should really be on the comeback trail. They'd be saying, well, throw the belt away. Do that. Anthony Joshua lost to Daniel Dubois comprehensively, Yes. Does that mean he was crap? Does that mean he was garbage? No. Far from it. I think Anthony Joshua in this era of heavyweights, is he the best? No. By no there's not even an argument. There might be some delusional fanboys who will argue it and say, you know, oh well he still is the best of this era based off of what? You know, based off of what be your perception. Alexander Rusek is the gold standard of this heavyweight and there's no debate in that. Would I say Tyson Fury is second best? Yeah, I would. I would, in fairness. Joshua third, definitely. Wilder fourth. Parker probably has a better claim to be fourth best heavyweight of this generation than Joseph Parker. Oh, sorry, Joseph Parker than Wilder, I should say. Wilder number five. I mean, Zilly Zhang should have had a win over Hergovic. He's got a, two wins over Joe Joyce and he's got a win over Deontay Wilder. Although he's not a champion... That's better than... Zile Zhang not being a champion has a better resume than Deontay Wilder as a champion. And that's a fact. 
so there you go. I have a separate video planned on Alexander Usyk that I'll probably release tonight. I recorded it last night, but I haven't got a chance to release it yet. But this will probably go up first. But that's just my two cents on this. Anthony Joshua is Anthony Joshua is crap. He was always crap. Tyson Fury would have clearly beaten him. No. I, I think that that would have been... I would have probably made Fury favourite. Yeah, I, I probably would have. If, if, if they'd have met in their primes, I would have made him favourite. They might still meet. The hunger for that fight is not quite what it was. Even if Joshua had beaten Daniel Dubois and Fury had a lost or beaten Alexander Usyk, I would have I would have been excited. Now it's kind of like, well, if Fury loses to Usyk and Joshua coming off the back of a loss to Dubai, if they do meet next year, I mean, all right, but like that got the can Brookfield to it. That has the can Brookfield to it, where it's like both guys are done. And both guys, okay, Amir Khan wasn't coming off the back of a loss, but he might as well have been. Because he fought Billy Dib, a career lightweight. Super featherweight, actually, really, in Saudi Arabia. His last meaningful fight was a loss. And as for Kell Brook, the same. Lost to uh, Terence Crawford. And Khan's last meaningful fight was Terence Crawford. Difference was, as well, with those guys, there was a big stretch of inactivity. Where with Fury and Joshua, there wouldn't be. That's one thing I will say, because, I mean, Kell Brook was out of the ring for... A year and a bit can was out of the ring for nearly three years so it's slightly different but same kind of thing they're both near the end you know so that's that but yeah that's my thoughts on this you know people critique anthony joshua all you want did he perform well against dubai he certainly didn't do i think he should carry on no was he ever a bad fighter absolutely not if he was such a bad fighter he would never have achieved what he achieved it's as simple as that. I'll leave it there. Hope you enjoyed it. Smash the like button if you could. And subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. I'll leave it there. Peace.